Guys, what's up? Pff, oh, wow. I thought I couldn't get any cringier. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. There you can find bonus content for mostly Paleo Bites, this show. A little bonus content for my other podcast, The Rit Wit, if that's still going on. Who knows at this point? For the Paleo Bites bonus content, we discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals. And this month, we're talking about nobody's favorite Pixar movie, The Good Dinosaur. Uh, more like The Mediocre Dinosaur. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Got him. So we discussed that, we rate it, fun stuff. Sorry if you're a fan of that movie, because we're not very nice to it. But, you know, hey, opinions, they're a wonderful thing. If we all viewed art the same way, the world would be a very boring place. And I say that as someone who genuinely likes the movie 10,000 BC, a movie that has 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. So really, like whatever you like. <laughs> so, link is in the description, where you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a wonderful day. Yay, yay. Roar. Growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that loves prehistory. Like, loves it. I want to marry it. I want to marry it so bad. And then I want to f*** it. I want to f*** the ever-loving sh** out of it. And then I want seven kids with it. I want to grow old and die with it. Seven. Before finally becoming a fossil as prehistoric as it is, buried in the ground with it for eternity. My name is Matthew Donald, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus and prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week we are joined by a very special guest co-host. He's rolling his eyes. He's rolling his eyes as we speak, <laughs> being as zombie-like as the dinosaurs when they inevitably could become alive in the museum, I don't know, <laughs> as the skeletons. He said he would never go into paleobites, but against his principles, here he is because we are in desperate times. Some of my co-hosts have had some issues, so I've had to hastily get some episodes ready to go. And so, thankfully, devoting his time, it is one, only Matthew David Syvert. How are you, buddy? Uh, it's it's good to be here, buddy. I, I mean, I say that I was never planning to get on Paleobites proper, and truly, you I never planned. You have been planned, on the Patreon, so. But I've been on the Patreon stuff, so it's not like I'm completely foreign to, well... For those of you supporting Patreon, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Even if by the time it's this comes out, show. I'm not getting it anymore. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Like we really appreciate it. Like we're back. Like, this isn't your. Like show. this is a we thing anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, the thing. Like you, we, we as listeners might know, we host currently on indefinite hiatus a uh, show, The Rit Wits, where two twists talk about rating. Hey, if you want me to get my vigor back. <laughs> yeah, I would it. love for all of you to go check out go the Go all check Please it out. Download make, it. Become comments. patrons. Just be, support beca- us like crazy. Become patrons and then say in your patron message, I will rescind my Patreon subscription if you, <laughs> if you don't <laughs> post more episodes of The Rit Way. If enough people do that, I'll be like, you dang can, it, I have can, to continue The you can do You can do comments to say, but but David is so good of an addition. Why don't you do more podcasts with him? And then, we and just then I'll be like, okay, great. Way. I'll get him more on Paleo Bites. <laughs> 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 Not how this is going to work. All right. Anyway. Okay. All right, uh, so I'm, I'm, other than that, though, I'm doing well. I'm excited because it is a different, you know, a different environment for us. Like, yes. obviously we have our own thing that we've done for a very long time successfully. Well, you might argue success, but <laughs> nonetheless, it, it lasted 160 episodes and which, like seven if that years. Is your, if that is your definition of success, then yes, we were You know successful. how many podcasts have just like one episode and then the, the hosts are like, I'm bored. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, it's an investment in time, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and we had we had a long running podcast, but this podcast is a completely different format. So I'm excited to play around in it. Well, thank I will you. admit that. Well, one of the things we do at the beginning is like a dinosaur related question. Oh gosh, uh, what are you going to ask me on about this? Okay, so <laughs> no, so I had to drag you kicking and screaming to do this show because you like you say there's there's a carrot at the end of this stick, by the way. But just you wait and find out. All right. It's because he's like, oh, I'm not qualified to talk about it. I've always argued. I am well, not. I, well, I was just arguing like none of my co-hosts are, and I barely am. So <laughs> uh, a lot of times, though, I like the theme, the dinosaurs or other creatures based off my co-host's interests. Mm-hmm. What hypothetical creature, I've talked about this before in particular off air, but what hypothetical creature would they have to discover that under normal, non-desperate measure circumstances would get you on the show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember this conversation now. I uh, was going... Okay. 
So I guess more so much the creature, but what they'd have to name it, because that's really what it's like in terms of your interests or whatever. Oh, I guess the creature itself. You could describe. The well, okay, okay. Uh, so, so the creature itself would probably have to be um, an incredibly, an incredibly special breed because it would have developed a bunch of different colors. Uh -oh. I'm not going to say plumage or scales or whatever. I'm not going to go there, but it had to develop a bunch of colors. And if there were five different colors. Yeah. That made it almost look like it by itself could present a team as a united front. Five kind of different thing. variants, I guess. Five different variants. So maybe it's five different variants of the same creature and all of them are like solid whatever color. Mm -hmm. But if that was discovered and it was found in Japan, because of course Japan is important to me, that's not a spoiler for those who know me any any better than this episode. But and it would be named. And it would probably then be jokingly named the Sentai whatever. Sentai Raptors or something. Sentai Raptor. I mean, Raptor's probably the best one because it would actually make sense to have that of all okay, the Okay, and what colors. would these five colors be, you might ask? Well, I mean, they could be just about any five colors. One of them has to be red. Yeah. Another one has to be blue. And the others, well, they're up in the air. I'm going to say, green, like, if the others are, like, well, that's to say, like, the others could be, what are, what, are the, what are the original five colors? So the original five colors are uh, red, blue, Yellow, pink, and green in their numerical order. That's why I had to think. Okay, about but that. I thought the green one, or am I thinking of Zero Ranger, where the green one comes in later? Well, Zero Ranger is one that actually they did red, blue, black, yellow, pink. Okay, and then added green. Okay, but that's I was six, gonna make a joke. Five. I was gonna make a joke that they found those original five, and then later on when they found the, the sixth one, they found the green. Sixth, it's green. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, I have to get Matt David, Matt Seifert on the show. He has to talk about this. He's still like, oh, it's yeah, still we're not we're gonna have to figure out how you reference me on this show because it's gonna be weird. That's true. You usually go by Matt David because my well, name's I usually Matt just go by David because we have the same name. But I guess I will, in deference, call you Matt. But you probably just call me David. I I'm think. gonna call you Greg. That's you're a, gonna call that's me a, Greg. That's All an right, in so joke from that my is friends. <laughs> So great. Uh, so for those friends who understand the joke, thank you for listening. We I appreciate just it. learned today that my girlfriend, to differentiate you, calls you Maddie S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's great. Anyway, so. All right. So we're not talking, unfortunately, about uh, the elusive. This is not the, uh, the hypothetical Sentai, sentai whatever. Yeah. We are instead. We are talking about Japanese dinosaurs, though. Uh, I mean, it had and, to be. And we are talking about a raptor. We are talking about a raptor. Now, you're going to have to. Tell me how to pronounce the beginning. It's, okay, it's so after a specific brecture, there prefecture, it, yes. and the jokes on this show write themselves. But I know there's a different. Sort this of. one should not write itself because it's a different language. The proper name of this. Do you want me to introduce the creature or just? Yes, why don't you introduce the creature? Okay, so today I have the pleasure of talking about the Fukui Raptor. Fukui Raptor is the thief of the Fukui Prefecture. What, what is a prefecture? I don't know. I'm a dumb American. I don't know states and cities. None well, this. okay, stay. So prefectures like the states of Japan. Okay. So very similar. It's kind of like provinces in Canada, too. I was going to say, thing. like, I don't know prefectures or province. Is it, what's province? We have states, darn it. Yeah, <laughs> everyone else should have states. <laughs> but I, but to wit, I lived in Japan for five years, so I'd yes. have a hard time not calling it a prefecture. What is anyway. a providence? That's a different word. Providence? Is that, just uh, is that like a government, uh, a special like governmental designation for a location? Listeners, write in. What's a providence? Please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I keep, I'm sorry, that is a bad show. habit. It is not your show. I mean, look, you can for this. I am so good at that, though. This that, is that how you actually you're not plug. qualified. It's actually that you're too qualified <laughs> for the podcast. I am too qualified for the hosting thing. I am not qualified about the information. You're too there qualified to be go. a co-host. You're not qualified <laughs> enough. To be, okay, anyways. It's probably because we have perfected a patter for so long. Exactly. But moving exactly. on. Anyways, type is a Megaraptor and Theropod. I'll get into what the Megaraptorans are. Uh, size 13 to 16 feet slash 4 to 5 meters long, 660 to 1,300 pounds, 300 to 590 kilograms. So this is a pretty big boy. It was a big boy, but not a huge boy. Not a huge boy. Well, well I mean, in terms of dinosaur weights, that is probably like next to nothing. But well, as actually, far as actually, what I would think, yeah. considering how much I weigh, which I will uh, redact for strategic reasons. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Matt Seifert, uh, weight, 660 to 1,300 pounds, 300. Oh, look, you weigh exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah, but that, I mean, that that's because I'm a really big boy, obviously. That's what I'm getting at. I'm a bigger boy, but only relatively. Only re <laughs> 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 If I weigh 660 to 1,300 pounds, it just depends. I had, I had a skip day on my diet the right. other day. That was the problem. Uh, all right. So anyways, <laughs> diet, speaking of diet, diet carnivore. 
This is why. Way too much protein. <laughs> a time early Cretaceous, 127 to 115 million years ago. Location, Japan, specifically in the Fukui pre Prefecture. Yep. Just... It was described well, and Fukui Fukui is fun because they have uh, they have a wonderful dinosaur museum there. Oh, it makes sense. Well, because uh, I'll get into it. There's a lot of Fukui dinosaurs. Yeah, complete your collection. Anyway. Uh, described in 2000, mm -hmm. pop culture references. Uh, yeah, right. Like I think it's gonna be brave enough to feature the <laughs> raptor. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> okay. He couldn't stop himself. Okay, Japan has an interesting history in regards to the dinosaurs, as well as the Japanese people loving the ever tokusatsu crap out of them. <laughs> if you watch any of their movies or TV shows, hey, kaiju films. Exactly. I'm actually getting into kaiju films recently. It's I knew it. I knew. It. I gotta show you the MonsterVerse at some point. The land as a whole has a certain geological significance in the time of dinosaurs. Uh, back in the Cretaceous, Japan was not a series of islands, but a coastal region of the easternmost parts of the Laurasian supercontinent. Uh, okay. It wasn't until roughly 20 million years ago in the early Miocene, and well after the dinosaurs of the land began to separate from mainland Asia. Okay, fair uh, enough. Um, let's see. Thus, back in these early Cretaceous times, the lands of Bolivia, known as Japan, were freely accessible to any and all wildlife back in the day. Because it was just connected to the Laurasia, exactly. basically. One yeah. of the best uh, formations to find such creatures is the Kitadani. Kitadani formation. Okay. An early, a unit of early Cretaceous sedimentary rock that crops out near the city, city of... Katsuyama. Thank you. I have these notes here. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a fluent Japanese person. <laughs> Katsuyama in the Fukui pressure of Japan. And it's this Fukui that Fukui Raptor gets its name. Well, a lot of other dinosaurs, too, I think, is what you were jokingly saying about the collection. I'll get to that later. So, as much as I'd like to joke about Fukui Raptor look like a Fukui <laughs> Raptor that I already did earlier. <laughs> Again, all these, there's so many rap So many raptor, raptor sounds. <laughs> that would be insensitive and unprofessional to make <laughs> raptor jokes. That stopped you before. <laughs> well, actually, I got a bunch of flack for talking about Santana Raptor as a Christmas <laughs> episode. <laughs> So I'm not doing that again. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, because you already did it once. <laughs> Actually, I don't get a lot of comments on the well. YouTube versions of... Uh, oh, so this literally came from the YouTube? This was a literal YouTube comment. I was like, Santana doesn't mean Santa! You <laughs> It's just like, this is an actual comment, and they left a oh downvote in the video. <laughs> oh, my god! I'm like, I'm not doing that again, I guess. Well, I mean, here's the, here's the thing. It's it's. Um, I promise there's a point. Where do you find everything? On the internet? The last place you look. Oh, okay. Because you'd be dumb to keep looking. <laughs> you found it, right? That's true. That's true. You've already done it once. What's the point of doing that again? That's true. So I'm not doing that again. But other cultures can have whatever names in their native language they want. If they happen to coincidentally sound similar to naughty parts of English, then whatever. Like, I mean, how about many people in East Asia have the name Dong? <laughs> Yeah, that's a disturbingly high number. <laughs> in the Netflix show The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy meets a cute Vietnamese man named Dong and starts chuckling, and then says her name is Kimmy, to which Dong replies, ha where I'm from, that word means penis. <laughs> Talk about subverting a joke. <laughs> it's a very funny show, I gotta say. You should watch it. If you don't, yeah. well, Fuku, e raptor <laughs> I don't think that one needs to be censored. Cause yeah, yeah, you don't even have to... <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to censor that one. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, Fukui Raptor is part of the ever confusing group of dinosaurs known as the Mega Raptorins, which have been cl cl cladistically placed all over the theropod group because no one knows what the hell they are. Oh, so that's why they have such a like vague name as Mega Raptor. Well, the, the reason why they are called Mega Raptorins is because. Most paleontologists confuse their rather large hand claws with the sickle shaped foot claws of the dromaeosaurids. Oh. Uh, and Fukui Raptor is no exception, hence why it has the suffix raptor in its genus. Okay. So, All right. but it's not actually in the dromaeosaurs. It's a hand claw, not a foot claw. Right. So that would make a difference. There was a one originally okay. called Mega Raptor that was found in South America. Sure. And it was found just by the sickle claw. I'm like, oh my god, this sickle claw is enormous. <laughs> it must be a real big raptor, a <laughs> mega raptor, if you will. I mean, it's one freaking claw. Okay. Maybe this like is 20 a inches years, long. <laughs> I, it's, it's a pretty impressive claw, but, like, it's one claw. It may as well be the full freaking organism if that's all you find of it. Uh, so this, this is where the not qualified part comes in. <laughs> this is where it's shining through. Because brightly. there are so many dinosaurs where we have just one or two bones. I'm aware. <laughs> so I'm aware, which is why we constantly get changing information because all of these things come up and suddenly, oh, wait, it actually does go with this skeleton we already had. Whoops. Exa exactly. It's not separate. <laughs> yep. It's Jack that. Horner. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have a fan here, <laughs> listeners. Fan of the show. I recently learned you. that Jack Horner has a cameo in Jurassic World. 
I suppose he deserves that. Kind he, of um, famous guy. He's like uh, in the background. You remember in the first – you've seen the first – I saw you the second one against your will. Yeah, I also <laughs> saw the first Jurassic World, yes. But as the first one after uh, – Chris Pratt's character, I forget his name, he's just basically Chris Pratt. I think Owen Grady or something. Owen, I think is yeah. the name, yeah. He finishes the initial training of the Raptors from above, mm-hmm. and then when they're done, they all go away. You see a bunch of trainees or uh, tra- other people like high five and whatever. It's like, oh, we did it. And one of them is Jack Horner. I like to think it's actually the real Jack Horner. That he's like, <laughs> he's like asserting, like in universe, he's like, well, I'm going <laughs> to help train these Raptors. What else am I, is a paleontologist going to do? <laughs> I could not tell you that. Anyways, so. Uh, you were, I think you were talking about Dromaeosaurs. Okay, so Fukui Raptors in the Mega Raptors family. Mm-hmm. Hence why it has the suffix raptor in its genus. The Dromaeosaurs are in the Silurosaur group of theropods, which also includes the Tyrannosaurids. However, okay. for a while, the Mega Raptorans were considered to be part of the Neovenatorid family, a group of theropods more closely related to the Carcharodontosaurids, like Giganotosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus. Okay. Interesting um, that that's the, like, the new hunter family. Is that because of when they were discovered, maybe? Uh, Neovenator. Oh, yes, you know your Greek. Uh, I think it's just, it's new in terms of, like, uh, when it's... So, like, it was later when it, on. Later in on the, in time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes some sense. I just wasn't sure if that was because of when it was dis- when it was discovered or when they existed. The, a lot of families Neo, like this you know? are named after their initial genus that, that sparked the family. Mega So, we found a Neovenator. Right. And then we're like, okay, well, it doesn't seem to be related to anything else, well, so let's it, just go the uh, uh, But then they find things that happen to be related to them or questionably <laughs> related to exactly, them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, then more recent cladistic analysis proposed the Megareptorans are actually a subfamily of Tyrannosaurids, putting them back in the Silurosaur group of theropods they originally came from. What the hell are these things? Well, I mean, if they're back where they came from, you get to argue for now that's where they belong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ugh. You missed this. I missed this. You, you always make comedy so effortless. And I think <laughs> I think it'd be a little bit better if you know, put some effort into it as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's the takeaway. <laughs> that is not my joke. I got that from a Steve Martin Martin short special on Netflix. <laughs> I cannot claim that joke. I always steal from people who are way better than I am. What are you talking uh, about? Steal from people who are far better than you. Like That's the best way to do it. Anything. And yeah. for more on that, listen to our show, The Rit, the Rit Wit, where we talk about ripping off. Guys, that's how I would really like this show to come back. We can't do the ding. It's the wrong show. Dang it. <laughs> 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 we need the button. We canceled the show before the button came in. <laughs> Dang it. How dare the world conspire against us. <laughs> by the world, you mean me by canceling the show. <laughs> well, okay. Yes, mostly you, but the world conspired against us that we didn't have the button already. All right. Anyway. Uh, anyways, <laughs> that's the problem with paleontology. It's always going to be an incomplete puzzle we have to put together with a tiny fraction of the pieces. Someone's got to invent time travel already. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would really help. It would also help if the, the ways that they were, you know, entered into their... Um, fossilization place wasn't so like scattered and would end up being separated mm. by tectonic shifts and all that stuff that we can't exactly. control too. Yeah, like the tectonic shifts also like it also depends on the layer being pushed up to the surface, which a lot of them aren't, you know. Some of them probably pushed further down. Like, honestly. If we if we can scan for things, maybe there's a lot of bones like miles beneath the so earth. So somebody needs to invent that. Yeah. Get on that. Get on that thing. Anyway. Get on that, geologists. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, I find it ironic that it does get its name Fukui Raptor from the prefecture that it was excavated in, but, like, theoretically, mm-hmm. that might not have been all of its territory, right? Oh, no. Absolutely not. That's just where we found it from. Right. Um, uh, speaking of its name, though, Fukui Raptor shares its environment with many other dinosaurs, most of which are part of the big Fukui collection that I brought up recently. And Gotta this get them all. And this collection is Fukui Saurus, a herbivore mm-hmm. relative of the Iguanodontids, Fukui Titan, a titanosaur sauropod. Wonder if that's the big boy. Uh, that, that's the biggest Fukui boy. Biggest of the ones. Yeah. Biggest Fuku boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one more joke. <laughs> Fukui boy. Uh, Fukui Venator, a meat-eating dinosaur that's actually in the raptor family. <laughs> Ironic, because it has hunter in its name instead of raptor thief. And finally, Fukui Terex, a dinosaur that is pretty much 95% of the way there into birds. Huh. Collect all of them now. Got to catch them all. Each one sold separately. You know, <laughs> you, there's there's a place you can probably do that. Well, okay, that's nope. Never mind. Not gonna do that joke. What was the joke? You have to. I was to do gonna it now. say we have it at Nerds Are Us. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, to, we we'll get to that at some point. We except we don't yet. Anyways, so <laughs> before we get to that though, when we get to where can we find you and you and you plug nerds are us. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well, you have to write the ML one half sixty five million. 
All right. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give it, like, I mean, it's a, it's a, other than its name and where it's from, I don't know. It's just basic Mega Raptor and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like. well, and Mega Raptor and Genus sounds way cooler than it probably is because it's just like, oh, gosh, this 20-foot claw is amazing. 20-foot <laughs> claw. Whoa. <laughs> 20 inches. Oh, inches. <laughs> Excuse me. That sounds way less amazing than it even did before when I didn't. Apparently, didn't even the Therizinosaur right. with the biggest claws known to man. They were only four feet long. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We're not claw talking about like well, that's Goliath like getting to kaiju. Size. We're just talking about freaking kaiju. Speaking of <laughs> speaking Japan. of kaiju, but speaking I of mean, Japan, anyway. Speaking of kaiju, I mean, it could be a Tokusatsu show. Who knows? Okay. Well, I'm gonna rate uh, this non Tokusatsu dinosaur. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like 18 million. Man, it's, all right, man, it's, all right. I don't know. It's, um, fine. it's more good for the jokes. Again, I can't do it because it's insensitive. YouTube commenter. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on the one bad apple and ruined it for all of us. Oh, uh, I should mention one of the patrons actually suggested that we do this dinosaur. Friend of the show, Jesse, one of the yeah. patrons. He suggested, yes. like, hey, can you do Fukui Raptor? And I'm like, cool, we'll do awesome. it. Awesome, we'll do it. Well, thank you, Jesse, because that was the thing. We even named him on the Ritwit for supporting us. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Of course. Um... um all right. Well, um, so, what, so I give you eighteen million. What about you? Keep in uh, mind, this is official records. Official so take it records. Seriously. No. <laughs> official fossil records, even. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, yeesh. We're putting uh, this in the ultimate time capsule. The uh, Earth. I was. I was gonna <laughs> give it. I was gonna give it uh, four claws out of five mm. because that'd be a really Im- interesting image. Although I'm sure it only had like what one per hand. Um, no, it had more than one per hand. Maybe two at the most. Uh, I don't know, probably had three per hand. So, like, two kind of talon-ish? Yeah, okay, in terms of, like, claws in general. The big claws, claws yeah, big one claws per hand. One, but then the big claws, one per hand. The other is, like, there were two that. others. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Okay, I, I thought you just meant claws in general. I'm like, what? It wasn't, like, a bird. Which well, just, I, was mm. saying, I was saying... There was mononychus, which did have one claw per hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, nychus being, what, nail and mono one? Nychus is, like, claw. Yeah. Oh, claw. Okay, fair enough. Uh... So that's the silly answer. The the serious answer, the one that should go into the fossil record. Again, into the ultimate time capsule, the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate time capsule is so great, it keeps being excavated. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to give it a 10 million. There was, 10 there was million. a joke in there that I was going to give it a 37 million. Yeah. One for each number of Sentai series before the show that told me that Fukui Prefecture has a dinosaur museum. Ooh. But I might save that for another one. That's that almost something later. Christina would do because she gave she gave the lowest score on this entire show. Well, one of the lowest scores because I rated one a little bit lower. Uh, but she she gave uh, like Sean Honosaurus. Uh, oh, okay. I thought you were going to talk about the, like the cat the not the caterpillar the millipede. Oh, that one I gave it two. Pleura. That was the lowest. I gave it a two, not two million, <laughs> just two. <laughs> two. Uh, I thought she gave it like a negative or something. Uh, no, no, I don't she remember. she gave it some. I think she gave it a little bit higher, like three. I, I think. Uh, so. Thanks for thanks for listening to this episode, Christina. We appreciate you. No, the second lowest is she gave it uh, Sean Hossler. She said, there's only eight bones found, so I'm just going to give it eight. I'm like, out of 65 million? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ouch, Sean Hossler. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about laying the beat down. Good grief. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, it's got a cool thing because it's from it was found in Japan, and that is one of the reasons that Japan is so invested in dinosaurs in general. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's just another raptor. And, and not even a raptor. And not even a raptor, you yeah. know? And so um, I, I'm not going to say anything in, like, Miss Potential because what do I know about dinos? This is why it took him forever to drag me kicking and screaming onto Paleo Bites. By the way, I should specify, listeners, if you're like, oh, wow, I love this dynamic between these people because clearly they've been friends for a long time. I can't wait to hear this for the rest of the show. No, this is like a one-time – well, no, you got a couple more episodes, but this, these episodes uh, – as far, unless I can convince them to do more, this is a one – Time thing. This and a couple more episodes. This is literally... Uh, oh, this is a favor more go, than anything. You go into the hallway and you see break glass in case of emergency. This is that emergency. This is the Godzilla threshold <laughs> has been crossed. <laughs> <laughs> so... If anyway. you want more of the banter, go check out the Ritwit. We got plenty. Please, give us more downloads. <laughs> Please. Give me back that vigor. We need that vigor or else I can't do it without him. So yeah, because who is anyway. the one who edits it and... Pays for it. I'm not saying uh, you don't have a huge role. Writes 90% of the skits. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyways. 
So I'd say ten million. Cool. That's <laughs> it for this week. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at Matt D at MattDonaldCreator.com for each of the questions to any of our co hosts, including one more. <laughs> Including the one that finally got in, <laughs> the, rather than the one that got away. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say rather than the one that got away, the, the one that nearly got away, and then nearly, very nearly got away. Remember, this is the day that Captain Matt Sivert almost escaped. <laughs> 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 You can find me on social media at Methadon Create on Facebook, at Methadon64 on Twitter, and Methadon64 on Instagram. Not a Y64 joke, though, if you want to find more Wrong about that. Wrong show. Wrong show. Sadly. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in writing, I mm-hmm. have, well, I guess not anymore. We, You and I. You can still access it, though, so please do. <laughs> yeah, you can find our show where it's all this for 160 episodes. <laughs> Most of 160, not all of them. Yeah, I've been in all of them. You've. Had to miss out on a few, but well, I mean, moving moving across an ocean again is kind of a good reason to miss a few episodes here and there. Anyways, it's called the Ritwit. We're two, t- <laughs> two twits. These two twits. These exact t- twits. Talk about ridding. <laughs> uh, please support the show. Give it way more downloads, and then get me that vigor back. <laughs> and for what it's worth, even if he never gets his vigor back, the content is we're planning to leave it up. It is a lot of fun. We put a lot of effort into it, and we hope you enjoy. It. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, also, I have a book sales on Amazon Megazoic available for print and Kindle. Uh, there was not a Fukui Raptor in it, as far as I recall, but I remember putting one in in the very first Megazoic. That is from true. 2004. That is it's true. one of the first dinosaurs. Like as they're landing on the moon base, a Fukui <laughs> Raptor guides them down. <laughs> a moon base, and this is not the version he published. Oh, doesn't it make you want to see the unpublished version, listeners? I have to scrounge my old computer there to see if I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, uh, that's where they can find me. Also, where can they find you? As yeah, well. so I mentioned a little bit jokingly, but I mentioned that I have another podcast as well called Nerds Are Us, and that is available where you are listening to this podcast. But if you want to check us out, we have a Discord server, and I will pass that link on to yes. Donald so he can include it especially in this episode. It will be in the description for the episodes that you are in. Yep, so. and you can get in touch with me there. Nerds Are Us, just as a quick pitch for that. It's a store much like Toys Are Us, Babies Are Us. It's just for nerds. We're still searching for your fandom's aisle. Come on in and let us know what it's it a, is. It's a store so big, they're searching for the aisles. It's like, <laughs> like imagine like a Costco. And then imagine multiple layers of it like a big mall. There is there is literally, the joke is, the never-ending, growing store that is. It's a labyrinth. There's probably a few minotaurs in there. there Watch probably out are for a them. few minotaurs in there. Figures. <laughs> Maybe the real things. I don't know. You'll anyway. have to find it. All right. Well, that's it for this week. And say at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. Uh, <laughs> 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 Well, I was just like, like, totally what they said. It's yeah. morphin' time. <laughs> 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 Fukui Raptor. <laughs> Fukui Titan. <laughs> yeah, Fukui Raptor, Fukui Titan, Fukui Saurus, Fukui... What else do we have? Fukui Terex. Fukui Terex. Fukui Venator. Venator, yeah. Anyway. Bye.